In this video, we will practice using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. The second fundamental theorem of calculus tells us how to take the derivative of an integral defined function. In the common case, the lower limit of integration is a constant and the upper limit is just x. If that's the case, then the derivative is just f of x. Then there's the general case where the upper or lower limit of integration is a function of x. In this case, the second fundamental theorem of calculus says you take the inner function and you plug in the upper limit of integration. Then you multiply by the derivative of the upper limit. Then you subtract and you plug in the lower limit of integration times the derivative of the lower limit. Problem number one. Find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f of x equals this integral defined function at x equals pi over 6. When we are asked to find the equation of a tangent line, we know that we need to find a point and the slope. Let's start with the point, and they already gave us the x-coordinate of the point. It is pi over 6. So now we need to find the y-coordinate of this point, which will be f at pi over 6. So that means we are talking about the integral from pi over 6 to 2 times pi over 6. But 2 times pi over 6 simplifies to pi over 3 of the cosine of 3t dt. To integrate this, I'm about to do a little mental u substitution. Imagine that u is 3t. That means u prime is going to be 3. Whenever u prime is just a constant, we know we will end up dividing by that constant. So I'm going to end up with a 1 third out in the front. And that's all I really need to do for my u substitution. Now I can just do the antiderivative of cosine, which is sine. So I can just write the sine of 3t. And here come the limits of integration from pi over 6 to pi over 3. This reminds me to find the value at pi over 3 minus the value at pi over 6. So here we have the value at pi over 3 minus the value at pi over 6. But 3 times pi over 3 is just pi, and 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2. The sine of pi is 0, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this will be negative 1 third. So this is the y value of the point. So we have a point on the tangent line. In order to write the equation of the tangent line, we also need the slope of the tangent line. Of course, the slope of the tangent line will be given by the derivative. And this is where the second fundamental theorem of calculus comes in. To take the derivative of an integral defined function, we will take the inner function, cosine of 3t, and we will plug in the upper limit of integration. So I'm going to put times 2x right here. But then we must multiply by the derivative of the upper limit. So we are going to multiply by 2. I think I would rather put this 2 in the front. So we have this. Next we subtract. This time we will take the inner function. And instead of t, we will plug in the lower limit of integration. So instead of 3t, we will have 3x. Normally, I would say, hey, let's now multiply by the derivative of the lower limit of integration. But the derivative of x is just a 1, so we don't need that. Three times 2x is 6x. We need to find the slope 
at pi over 6. So we need to evaluate f prime at pi over 6. So that'll be 2 times the cosine of 6 times pi over 6 minus the cosine of 3 times pi over 6. 6 times pi over 6 is pi, and 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2. So f prime at pi over 6 will equal 2 times the cosine of pi is negative 1, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this is negative 2. That's the slope. Now that we have a point and the slope, we can write the equation of the tangent line. It goes y minus y, so that's y minus negative one-third, which is y plus one-third, is equal to the slope times x minus x, or x minus pi over six. And that's it. Problem number two, the graph of f is shown here, and g of x is the integral defined function, the integral from five to x of f at t dt. We need to find g at three, g prime at three, and g double prime at three. Let's start with g at three. This will be the integral from five to three, of f at t dt. So this will be the area under the curve between 3 and 5. Normally an area above the x-axis is considered to be a positive area. However, we are integrating from 5 to 3. Can you see how that's backwards? We are working from right to left. So instead of being positive, this will be negative. Let's divide this area up into rectangles and triangles. We can divide the area into a rectangle and two triangles. Let's start with the area of this rectangle. The base is 1 and the height is 1.5. So 1 times 1.5 is 1.5. So far we have g at 3 is equal to 1.5 plus. Now let's talk about the area of this triangle. This is one half base times height. The base is one and the height is two. So that's an, a one times two is two of course and half of that is one. Now what about the area of this tiny little triangle right here? The base is one and the height is one half. 1 times 1 half is 1 half, but for the area of a triangle, we need 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half 1 times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. So the total area is 1.5 plus 1 plus 0 0.25. That's the 1 fourth. But don't forget that all of this is considered to be a negative area. So g at 3 is negative 2.75. Now let's find g prime at 3. So we need to remember how to take the derivative of an integral defined function. This is the common case of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. If you have an integral defined function where the lower limit is a constant, and the upper limit is x, then the derivative is just f of x. So g prime of x is simply f of x, which means that g prime at 3 is just f at 3. This is the graph of f, so what is the value of f at 3? It is 1.5. So g prime at 3 is 1.5. Now let's find g double prime at 3. So what is g double prime 
of x. g double prime will be the derivative of g prime. Since g prime is f of x, then the derivative will be f prime of x. So g double prime at 3 will be f prime at 3. And we know that the derivative is the slope of the curve at this particular point. So f prime at 3 is the slope of f at 3. So here is the graph of f. Here is f at 3. What is the slope right here? Well, rise over run. This is going up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. So the slope of this segment is 1 half. Since f prime at 3 is 1 half, that means g double prime at 3 is 1 half. Part B, find the zeros of g. In other words, where does g of x equal zero? In other words, for what values of x will the integral from five to x of f at t dt equal zero? Well, one is obvious. If x is five, then we have the integral from five to five. There is no area between five and itself. So that integral will automatically equal 0. So 5 is one of the zeros. But what else? Let's play around with some values of x and see which ones will cause the integral from 5 to x to equal 0. Let's start with the integral from 5 to 0. This is an area under the curve from 5 to 0 because we are going backwards from right to left, even though this area is above the x-axis, it will be considered a negative area. Now, this will not be 0 because we have this entire negative area. We can see that it is not 0. The integral from 5 to 1 would be like this, still a negative number. 5 to 2, still negative. Still negative. Integral from 5 to 4, still a negative number. Next, we have the integral from 5 to 5, but we already talked about that. We already know that one is a 0. If we integrate from 5 to 6, now we are moving to the right, but this area will be negative because it is below the x-axis. 5 to 7, still negative. And 5 to 8, still negative. It looks like 5 is the only 0 of g. In other words, 5 is the only value of x for which g of x is equal to 0. Part C. Between 0 and 8, on what intervals, if any, is the graph of g increasing? Justify your answer. We know that g will be increasing when g prime is positive. When you ask yourself, where is g prime of x positive, remember that g prime of x is equal to f of x because of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Since we are given the graph of f, you should be asking yourself, where is f of x positive? And we can see that it is positive between 0 and 5 because it is above the x-axis. So g of x is increasing on the interval from 0 to 5 because g prime of x, which equals f of x, is positive on this interval. Notice the way I'm saying this. You want to mention g prime of x because we know that g of x is increasing when g prime is greater than 0. But we also need to mention f of x because that's the actual graph that we're given. We're not given a graph of g. So you have to say them both. So say it just like this, because g prime of x, which equals f of x, is positive. Part D. At what x coordinates, if any, does the graph of g have an inflection point? Justify your answer. Here's your thought process. We know that a point of inflection will occur when g double prime changes signs. Remember that g prime is equal to f of x. 
So g double prime equals f prime of x. Since g double prime is equal to f prime, a point of inflection occurs when f prime changes signs. So we're getting closer to what we have, but we don't have a graph of f prime. We have a graph of f. So how can we see where f prime changes signs? We know that f prime is positive when f is increasing, and f prime is negative when f is decreasing. So f prime changes signs when f goes from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing. Okay, so a point of inflection occurs when f of x changes from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing. Where does that occur? This only occurs at x equals 4, where f goes from increasing to decreasing. Here's how I want you to write your answer. g of x has a point of inflection at x equals 4 because g prime of x, which equals f of x, changes from increasing to decreasing. We have to mention f of x because that's the only graph that we're given. We mention g prime of x because we are relating back to the original function we are being asked about, which is function g. Part e. At what x-coordinates, if any, does the graph of g have a relative minimum? Justify your answer. We know that g of x has a relative min when g prime changes from negative to positive, because that would mean that the slope is going from decreasing to increasing, thus relative min. But remember that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So where does f of x change from negative to positive? Hmm. Never. f of x is positive from 0 to 5 and negative from 5 to 8. It changes from positive to negative at 5. It never changes from negative to positive. So our answer is g of x has no relative minimum because g prime of x, which equals f of x, never changes from negative to positive.